Hello everyone, long time no see, welcome to another Jamie's Library video, my name is Jamie and I really, not on purpose, ended up taking like over a month off of making videos. I promise you, this was not intentional, I've been trying really really hard, here we are. Also, I'm really sorry if the lighting's really in and out in this video, I'm yet to find a proper filming space right now in my new house because I'm waiting for my bookshelves to arrive. Also, like, like, see, ew, like, this is so ugly, this situation here in the corner. Anyway, I'm yet to find a proper filming space, but we have life updates. We're going to talk about books that I've read recently that I uh, haven't mentioned on my channel because I haven't been making videos. So, yeah. First and foremost, I want to apologize for my break. I think Obviously, if you have been watching me for a while, you know that I have been going through some life changes. I went through a very hectic breakup to move out of my place, like just a lot of big things happened. And I feel like I tried really, really hard to be okay way too quickly, to get back to normal way too quickly. And at the end of the day, my life was not normal at that stage. I was still figuring things out and it led to me just falling apart basically not giving myself the proper time to heal that I needed to like I know that it's a tricky one because I'm really lucky I work from home I'm self-employed so I can take breaks whenever I want I know that it'd be a bit different if I was like employed by an employer and I had to still like go to work like I get that that makes sense I'm very lucky to be able to take as long off as I did but I think the difference is is that like my personal life is part of my content and everything so I didn't want to get online and be like yeah guys cried for the fifth time today <laughs> like awkward no one wants to see that no one wants to see that and no one wants to see the shadows that have just arrived oh okay anyway but things are looking slightly more up i'm not feeling 100 percent. i'm still very much grieving my relationship which was a you know pretty on off again relationship for the past five years so now that it feels like it's actually really final it's weird like i'm like how do i like go on without this person in my life who has been in my life the past five years this is now someone that is no longer going to be in my life aside from just occasionally seeing each other to drop off or pick up the dog that we now co-parent. So yeah, uh, big life changes, but I have moved house and I have actually moved back into the place that I was originally living. So the studio that I'm in, that I live like with my flatmates, it's now all mine, which is going to be kind of crazy, kind of stress. You will gonna be seeing way more videos than you have been because I am gonna have to be hustling. But I am back in my old place and I'm just going to get it all set up the way that I want it. I feel like when I have the time and the finances, that's gonna be a really, really fun thing for me to do is like just redecorate the way that I want to, the way that is very me. And I'm very excited to do that. I've already started kind of doing bits and pieces of that, but especially when I get my bookshelves in, it's, it's gonna be so like, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for that sort of thing. And like that is really helping me get through for sure. If anyone has any questions about what is going to happen with my dog Zuko, uh, he is still going to be co-parented for the time being, but we're just going to see how that plays out. I think me and Ben later on will have like a big discussion about the future of Zuko and what will happen. I really don't want to give him up. I will fight tooth and nail for him if I have to, but hopefully co-parenting works so we don't have to change that up because I love him so much. Anyway, he's not here with me right now. He's currently um, with his father, but I will be getting him soon and I'm very excited. I'm trying to think of like any other life updates that I haven't shared already. Like the things that you don't know. Basically I moved house. That's the biggest thing. I'm still kind of in the process of moving. Like I haven't got everything here yet, but I'm still in the process of that. I don't really know what else to say. Like <laughs> I've been feeling mentally unwell. Like ugh. I went and saw Taylor Swift. I went and saw the Eras tour in Melbourne. That was like a month ago, over a month ago now. And it was amazing. That was the best time of my life. I loved it. I actually have a full vlog of that experience on my Patreon. I still have been posting on Patreon. Not as much as I usually do and not as quickly and swiftly as I usually do. But I have still been posting on Patreon. That has still been a priority for me. So if you have missed me, I do have videos there. But obviously just no early access because I haven't been making any videos. But yeah, that's kind of it really. I've been streaming. I have recently got back into Twitch streaming. And yeah, I'm just ready to be back. I'm ready to be back. So... With that being said, with all of that like trauma dumping <laughs> out of the way, uh, let's get into my recent reads. You know, because that's what you're here for. You're here to hear about all my book reviews and stuff. That's why we're friends. So let's get into that. Let's get into the actual purpose of this video, which is the books that I've read recently. How many do I have to talk about? I can't remember what like 
the last book I talked about on my YouTube channel was. Like I know that like one of my most recent videos, like maybe like the second most recent video, which is not that recent at all, is maybe my January wrap up. Let me go look through my Goodreads and see what I haven't spoken to you about. Another life update that isn't even really a life update, but maybe a bookish update. My book buying ban, we're still on top of it. We're still on top of it. I haven't, I've been in a bit of, I've been a bit slumpy. I've been a bit slumpy. So why would I buy books? Also on top of that, I actually changed my Goodreads goal from 150 to 50. What was I thinking? Genuinely, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Being like, yeah, you'll definitely read 150 books, Jamie. You're single now. That, 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 yeah, so my mental health is not as good when I'm grieving a breakup. So why did I think it would be a good idea to read 150 books? No, I am uh, reading 50 books this year, hopefully, minimum. And I'm three books ahead of schedule. So that feels good. But honestly, guys, if you're feeling like stressed about reading, oh my God, the relief I felt when I changed my Goodreads goal, it was crazy. Okay, let's get into the books that I've read recently. The first book I read, I don't even own physically because I read on my Kindle, and that is What Lies Between Us by John Mars. This book. I read this in one sitting. I read this in one sitting. This was a four-star thriller. It was very exciting, quite dark, but I find John Mars is quite dark when it comes to his thrillers. This was a really good one because it was like, who's the good guy, who's the bad guy? And I love when thrillers really make you question morals and morality but basically this thriller is about a relationship between a mother and daughter the daughter has imprisoned her mother in the attic upstairs imprisoned her as a punishment for something that the mother did when our daughter was a teenager we follow two different timelines we start to learn the mystery of like why all of this is happening it's fucked up it's it made me really sad it made me really sad because i have a really terrible like trigger no not trigger i don't know i just I can't handle, I get a lot of anxiety when like bad things are happening to old people and bad things are happening to babies and children. I get really, really bad anxiety. And <laughs> a lot of this was in this book. However, I think John Mars created such suspense, like a lot of suspense and a lot of tension. And it really kept me on the edge of my seat. It really made me want to just keep reading. Like I did not want to put this book down. And when it when it comes to a thriller, that is really what you want. I think it was really, really well written. I feel like nothing was... I predicted nothing. Maybe one thing towards the end. But I feel like I predicted nothing. Like, it was all very intense. And I was like... I was gasping. I was like... Oh! Like, engrossed, but also grossed out. It was just really, really good. I really recommend it. I... I'm not remembering much of it now that I'm speaking about it because it was two months ago. But I have also really loved another John Mars book, which was The One. So I feel like this is an author that I definitely need to keep reading from because this one just kept me on the edge of my seat and I love that. Then I read The Mixtape by Brittany C. Cherry also on my Kindle and this was a Kindle Unlimited Romance. We love to see it and I actually have spoken about this one before on my YouTube channel because in my most recent video published, which was a while ago, uh, I talked about like a bunch of romance recommendations and this was like the first one I mentioned because I had just finished it and it was really really good. Basically the mixtape. This is a romance between a single mother and a rock star, a musician that she has loved since she was a kid. So the classic like fantasy, you know, like the classic teenage girl fantasy, although our main character is not a teenage girl. Basically the musician, he is like one half of this music duo who and they were brothers however his brother tragically died in a car accident so he's really struggling to uh move on and have and he's experiencing a lot of grief while also trying to like come back onto the music scene and he has this encounter with our female main character in a bar one night and she really takes him in and looks after him and she's kind of like what the fuck like what is this like situation that I'm in because she's obsessed with his music but he is like wow she's amazing like thank you for looking after me thank you for not being a weirdo thank you for seeing me for who I am like a human being who is very deeply broken and he ends up hiring her as his like personal chef because she's also really struggling financially and then they just form this really beautiful relationship from there like they really save each other like it's two people that need to be saved in different ways who are actively not seeking help and they don't realize they need each other until they like meet each other do you know what i mean they're like this is what i've been searching for and i didn't even realize i was searching for it i feel like i spoke in a lot of like pinterest quotes just then without really like saying anything productive but like that is what it felt like. That is what this book felt like. This book was really, really beautiful. I also gave it four stars. I think one thing that just grinds my gears, which is why I didn't give it five stars, because it's a thing that is quite 
common I think in a lot of books that have children in them because obviously there is a child our single mother her daughter sometimes I feel like these adult authors put these children in to be the voice of reason or the voice of wisdom and it just always kind of takes me out of it because I'm like ma'am this child is five this child is five how does she know more about like adult relationships and adult communication than like the adults in the book it's just not realistic and it always takes me out and it's just that like one trope that always like gets me I don't know. This book could have been five stars and it ended up being four because of that one thing, but it happened enough for me to be like, I can dock a star for this. But still a really beautiful romance. If you guys are looking for a really, really fun, like really beautiful, very pure and gorgeous Kindle Unlimited romance, this one. The next book I read, I have it physically behind me. It's right behind me. It's kind of towards the top of the pile. I can probably get it out. I feel like a bunch of you have been waiting for me to talk about this one. I finally read Magnolia Parks. The opposite of a pure gorgeous relationship. Toxic. Which we all knew. If you've been on booktube and you've heard people talk about this book, like we all know that this is about a toxic romance. Okay, so what to say about Magnolia Parks? I essentially read this in one sitting. Like, it's addicting. It's addicting. I gave it three stars. I didn't think it was the worst book I've ever read. Like, it was enough to keep me engrossed for the entire one sitting that I read it. If you have been living under a rock and you don't know what Magnolia Parks is about, basically, we follow our main character Magnolia and, like, her group of friends uh, in high society London. She's a bit of a socialite. She has this on, off again relationship with this guy called BJ and they're very, very, like, toxic for each other. And Magnolia, like, dates people to make him jealous. He cheats on her. He sleeps with all these women to, like, uh, just because he can, essentially. But they stay, like, really good friends and they keep keep staying in each other's lives and this book is kind of about them like navigating all these things. It really is like an episode of Gossip Girl. And I gave it three stars because I hate BJ. Uh, BJ stands? Why? Why? Oh, like why? I found it to be fun, exciting, addicting like I was just eating junk food. Like that, like this is a junk food novel and I could not put it down but there were definitely like criticisms that I have about it. So those three stars is definitely for like my reading experience, like me enjoying the process of it but like, cri like critically it's not very good. Like, it's not very well written. Magnolia, for example, she has this thing where she, like, is obsessed with clothes and she can name what someone's wearing just by looking at them, like, to the brand. But, like, because of that, like, we would get, like, fucking, like, four lines of text of, like, her describing her outfit every single time she wears clothes, which is every day. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So that was a bit tedious at times, and the book did feel very repetitive at times as well. Like, it was all, like, oh, BJ hurt me. Oh, but I can never stay away. But he hurt me again. But I can never stay away. Like, it, you know, it just felt very repetitive. And there was literally, like, one moment where Magnolia's sister, like, says to her, like, wow, you just, like, are really, really good at, like, always having male-related drama. And, like, this is essentially that. Like, she has got all these men who are in love with her. But she's always going to, like, the guy that's not right for her. But she has all this history with. And it got really tedious towards the end. I was like, I get it. I get it. Like, I really am getting it now, Magnolia. Like, do we need 500 pages of it? But it was enjoyable. I actually do want to read the next books in the series, which is good because I have them. So you'd hope I'd want to read them. I do want to read the next books in the series, but I'm just going to take, like, several months of breaks between each book that I read because, I mean, it was repetitive. And I heard that Daisy Hates, the second book in, like, this universe, like, is set in the same timeline. Do I really want to hear more about, like, Magnolia in that timeline? I don't know. I don't know. But it was fun. There were some characters I really loved. Like, I love Magnolia's sister. I loved Tom England, even though his name is Tom England. How are you, like, part of the upper crust of English society and your last name's England? Where's the creativity? Regardless of his last name, loved him. So, yeah, I'm excited to read more, but I finally read this, so... Then I read Not Here to Make Friends by Jodie McAllister, which is the third book in the Marry Me Juliet series, which is a companion novel series, which I really, really, really love. Really love it. So good. This book, I feel like you kind of need to read the other books in the series before you read this one, but all three books are kind of set at the same time, so it kind of doesn't really matter. And you'd think that, like, oh my god, Jamie, like, won't it be getting repetitive? You're seeing the same events play out three separate times. 
it doesn't like these books are always so so good i gave this one five stars so this series three five stars three, like every single book is five stars i cannot guess this series up enough and i feel like i have not seen anyone on booktube talk about it i've seen people in my comments be like i read this book because you really loved it and they also love it but like i have not seen anyone else on booktube read it so like guys read this book it's so freaking good and it will read the whole series but um basically this series is about a dating reality tv show in the first book we get a kind of friends to lovers moment from like the bachelor essentially and one of the contestants second book we get two female contestants falling in love and this one we get the villain of the series and the producer oh my god it was so good like this is honestly i think what may be my favorite because i loved the like dynamic of like producing the show like behind the scenes and the villain in here like i loved her so much it's just so funny it's so witty but i feel like it's just made for me because i fucking love reality television especially reality dating shows i don't even watch the bachelor but i watch enough love island to kind of like understand what the bachelor is all about a perfect book so well told so well structured really really good discussions in here about representation on reality television so gorgeous and it also is like australian the author's australian it's set in australia so it does kind of feel like australia and new zealanders really do share a sense of humor sometimes so i feel like they're it, i don't know it was just made for me it was made for me really highly recommend then i read everyone in this room will someday be dead by emily r austin which is a literary fiction kind of adult contemporary and i gave this three stars i think it was a really tough book to read at the time that I read it because it very much centers this lesbian woman who is like my age who is dealing with like really terrible anxiety. I deal with really terrible anxiety. So I was a little bit like seen. I, I felt very seen in a way that was almost triggering. Like I was like, like it was comforting on one hand. Like I was like, oh my God, like sometimes I feel like I'm the only human in the world that is experiencing these feelings and these thoughts and this process and like reading this I was like oh I feel comforted that I'm not the only one sad that I'm not the only one and that other people in the world have to experience this and also slightly triggered <laughs> because I don't want to experience this right now but it was a well-written book I think my issue with it and why it was a three stars as opposed to something a bit higher was um just because I feel like we didn't really know anything about our main character beyond the fact that she was a lesbian with anxiety like I feel like we really didn't know all that much else and I feel like as someone who is a bisexual woman and has severe anxiety I can name so much more about myself beyond those two things like I just really don't think that I am defined by my sexuality or my like mental illness and I feel like this character very much was we didn't really get much else about her and even if the book is kind of centering anxiety and is about that that doesn't mean that our character has to like not have any other traits like I would love to have like seen more from her I think. I do think there were lines that were really really funny. I loved that there was this kind of like weird murder mystery aspect towards the end as well but yeah I think it was a three stars. I don't think I'm going to be thinking about it all that often ever again really <laughs> but it was it was a good read which I would recommend to others. I would recommend it to others yes. Not high priority but it'd be on a recommendation list like maybe tailored to certain people I don't know and then I read Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson and I almost like don't want to speak on this because I feel like I want to reread it at a time when I am more mentally stable and more put together I feel like uh reading this like epic standalone fantasy wasn't what I needed at the time because when I first started reading it I was like wow this book is for me like I'm loving this and then as um, I kind of spiraled emotionally, my love for the book also spiraled, but there was no like shift in the book that like made that happen. It was just like, I felt myself not wanting to pick it up anymore, but that's because I also felt myself not really wanting to do anything anymore. Like I wanted to sleep all day. So I do want to reread this because I think the experience that I had was a three star. However, I think the book has like potential to be a five star. Like if I was just in a better mindset. So I almost don't want to speak on this, but I will say that this basically is a standalone fantasy novel about a main character, Tress, whose love of her life essentially gets banished from their small island and taken in by a sorcerer. And she goes on this journey 
leaving her island for the first time, joins this pirate ship to go on this massive journey to save him. Yeah, I, I feel like that's all I'm going to say because my thoughts on it I think would be very, very, very different to now than if I was to read it maybe a year from now. So I feel like this is almost going to go back on the TBR for a reread like within the next year. What I did love about it though when I first started reading it is that like on the back it says like this is for fans of The Princess Bride. Princess Bride is one of my favorite books of all time. That statement was correct. Like it was very reminiscent of The Princess Bride and I loved that about it. Like it wasn't exactly the same obviously because if it was exactly the same why wouldn't I just like read The Princess Bride? But like I felt those vibes and that kind of humor and I loved it. Also there was a talking rat and I have like a really soft spot for like talking rats in fiction and media and movies. Ratatouille, I love you. Remy. How are you doing? That's all I'm going to speak on that. I did read it, though. I did read it. And finally, oh, this is going to be a surprising one, guys. I actually had a comment being like, when I posted this on Goodreads, I'm like, I'm reading this. Um, I had a comment being like, I thought you were done with, like, people, like, shocked that I was even reading this. I read better than the movies. I read better than the movies, everyone. I did it. So I said I was done with Lynn Painter. But I had this video concept at the beginning of the year, which obviously I never finished. And in that video concept, I had to read a bunch of books that maybe I didn't really want to. And this was on the list and I forgot that I had bought it and then I like opened a package and I was like, I did fucking buy that in December 2023. Ugh. But then I was at my parents' house, I was staying at my parents' house and like this was like the only book I had there. And I was doing reading sprints with my patrons and they were like, why don't you just read it? Like, because I... God, me and my patrons, maybe I'm like slightly inappropriate and parasocial, but like they know how I've been doing. I like get on reading sprints and I'm like, guys, I'm really depressed. And they're like, girly pop, read, <laughs> read something fun. And so they were like, Jamie, why don't you just read better than the movies? Because it's like a YA contemporary, like it's a, it's a fun, easy going vibe. So I was like, you know what? Maybe <laughs> teenage love is what I need. Maybe I need to go back to fucking high school where things were a lot easier and I can read a fun little why a contemporary romance it actually worked it actually fucking worked i'm not even gonna lie to you like i actually was like this is what i needed right now i still gave it three stars <laughs> it definitely wasn't perfect but it was a fun time it's kind of like a low three like it could be a two and i feel like if i wasn't so like upset with life and i didn't like find this so comforting it probably would Critically, from my opinion, be a two. I feel like Lynn Painter, we still don't really vibe, but I needed this at the time. Honestly, it could have been any way a contemporary romance and it would have been a three star experience. But basically, this is about our main character, Liz, who uh, has a crush on this guy who comes back to town and she strikes up a deal, basically, with her like nemesis who lives next door to her. And he's gonna like help her get him to fall in love with her. But like obviously in the process, it's like a rom-com and it's based on a whole bunch of like different rom-com movies. There was like one sentence at the beginning, which was so fucking me. I was like, oh my God, maybe this book is gonna be a banger. Where she talks about Bridget Jones' diary. And she said that Colin Firth was really boring and Hugh Grant was amazing. <laughs> And she fucking devoured. She was correct. She was absolutely fucking correct. But anyway, <laughs> regardless, that small detail. I feel like, yeah, it was fun. It was. I feel like Liz, and with a lot of Lynn Painter's main characters, whether they be bloody teenagers or adults, Liz was a little hateful. She was a little like, I'm so quirky. Look at me in my dress with owls on it. Look at me who wears like these like big dresses. I, she wears short skirts, I, like, you know, a bit like that, a bit like that. Um, I'm probably gonna cut me singing Taylor out because that was not cool, that was embarrassing. But like, she is a little bit, you belong with me, T. You know, a little bit like, she's your captain and I'm in the bleachers. Like she literally talks about how there's this one girl who she like really hates because she's like really pretty. And I'm like, oh leave that energy at the door. There is like some really beautiful moments where with grief, like our main character Liz, actually um, her mother died when she was a lot younger. And I actually felt like there were some really beautiful discussions about that, really beautiful moments. But in terms of like the actual relationship vibe, like the fake dating, all that sort of stuff, I didn't really like Liz in those moments. And that was what the majority of the book was about, was about this potential relationship. And I just feel she was a little bit of a hater to other women. I actually one time got this comment from one of my haters. I've got haters, if you can believe it. I can. I got a comment from one of my haters being like, it's so crazy how she said that this character like is so bitchy and like not like other girls and like hates other girls, but she's like hating on the, the girl. 
Okay, well, I'm just for the first time ever going to address a hate comment in a video. Um, I'm a real human. <laughs> These are characters. So don't come for me for being a girl hater when I am critiquing other characters for being girl haters. They're not real. I am real. I am real. So if you're calling me a bitch because I'm calling them a bitch, I'm a real person. Thank you. Anyway, anyway, regardless. Yeah. And also, there were just like some bits that were cringe. There was also a really hectic vomit scene. Really hectic vomit scene. And I have emetophobia. So I was like, oh. Anyway, um, it was fun. It was what I needed. I feel like I've really gone on some chaotic rants today. And you know what? I'm finding my feet. <laughs> I'm finding my feet. Let me get back into filming the way that I need to. And if that's chaos and unscripted and... I mean, all my videos are unscripted, but if that's chaos and unscripted and not a lot of sense, at least it's something, you know, which is more than we can say for the past month. Well, that brings me to the end of this video. These are all, well, not all. These are some of the books that I read over the past couple months, along with the others that I spoke about. I'm so excited to get into more reading. I'm actually already in the middle of two books. I'm already filming a weekly reading vlog where I'm going to put together my TBR, I'm going to read a bunch of other books. I'm really, really excited for that and I'm just excited to be back. So please welcome me with open arms. Um, but if you don't want me to be back, that's okay because you cannot watch. But if you do want me to be back, I promise I'm going to be back. And I'm really, really, really excited to <laughs> be filming again and stuff like that. And I'm sorry about this lighting. This is the first video I have filmed since being back. And I have learned my lesson. And we're going to find a new filming spot very soon. Anyway, I love you all so much. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for sticking around. You're the best. And I'll see you very, very soon in the next video. Bye.